This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a domain, website, online store or simply a nice platform to showcase your photography, you can make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter offer code MATTHIAS to get 10% off your first purchase. Those of you that watch my video on my top 5 affordable cameras know that I already had this camera but had to let it go. Well, I have it again and this time I was more careful. Here are 5 reasons why I think this camera deserved to be bought twice. First off is no shocker, it's the build quality and design. We all know the drill, or should I say meal, it's that it's made from one single block of aluminium and polished for 45 minutes by hand. The truth is, many Leica cameras are, not just this one. Many say form over function, I say nonsense. This is very comfortable, solid and nice in the hand. The screen is gorgeous. The mechanism to prevent the battery from falling out is great. The detail of the craftsmanship is outstanding. The strap system is genius. You can use the included by, for example, the wrist strap that I have, or put on a regular strap lug and use whatever you like with the added bonus of it being able to turn. And yes, the little cover plugs are sold separately in case you lose them. One downside to this solid block of metal is that it gets freezing cold in the winter. that I have this plastic cover. It's not ideal since it shuts in the SD card, but since it's for extreme weather only, I live with it. Next we have the modern mount and the user interface. To get live view in an interchangeable lens Leica, the cheapest option is a used M, the which costs serious money. Here you have it, sadly no peaking though, but there's a magnification programmable to a wheel. And the screen like I said is gorgeous, so manually focusing and adapted like a M lens or something vintage like the Minolta 50mm is doable. The user interface is the best implementation of a touchscreen in any camera I've ever tried. Big simple icons that you can move around as you please. It's quick and snappy with the latest firmware, you have a long list of functions in the settings menu and you can add the ones you often use to the home screen. This lets me quickly access and change my settings. I will say I wish the mode menu would be a toggle switch like the info switch instead of having me step into a sub-menu. When in for example aperture priority, you can quickly and easily switch the function of the second command dial. Honestly, this is the best menus ever, it's just so taken down, simplicity, it's like the commercial said, nothing is extraneous and everything is essential. 
Now I know external physical controls are nice, I even rave about them myself in lots of reviews. And that's true, but I don't compare, because I can't compare. This is different, this is a different camera for a different type of shooting. Just like a smartphone or GoPro is fundamentally different from a DSLR. There is no right or wrong, you can choose to fight it or try to enjoy it. It shoots video, nothing special, only in full auto and 30p. But the inbody digital stabilization is actually pretty decent. Next reason is the price. Yep, the price. Since the TL and TL2 dropped, the price has plummeted. You can get this one for less than a thousand dollars, which is darn affordable compared to most Leicas. And for a little more, still cheaper than let's say a Fuji X100F, you get the 23mm f2 Sumicron included. Which quickly throws us to the last and main reason why I own this camera. The 23mm lens. A true Leica Prime. With autofocus and I could afford it. Crazy. Buying it separately, brand new, is almost $2,000, so don't do that. Even if you want a TL2, buy the T with it included and sell the body. So why do I care? What is the big deal? Well, like it or not, Leica lenses are a big deal. And I know some out there are saying, what about DxO marks, test charts, blah 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 blah. If that's you, turn off the video. This or any other Leica isn't for you. This is the cheapest way, and for many, the only way to own a lens like this. And for me, it's probably the only native lens I will ever get for this system. So what I end up with is pretty much a Fuji X100F for less money and with a different user interface but a much richer and more alive looking image. And with the added bonus of being able to switch lenses to for example affordable manual focus lenses like Voigtlander and Minolta if I choose to. The autofocus speed with the latest firmware on the 23 is on par with the X100T. But the manual focus scale is much better implemented and accurate than on the Fuji. So to sum up, if you are only after the lovely Leica colors in an interchangeable lens camera on a strict budget, then the M8 is your best bet. Or actually, check out my GXR review. But if you want the whole Leica look package of both color and lens and are willing to sacrifice for example a built-in viewfinder and are willing to try a different approach to photography then the T could be for you. That's it, I'm suspecting some fanboy hate on this one but after you're done with that feel free to check out my other videos and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day until next time, goodbye. This video was brought to you by Squarespace. At squarespace.com you find everything you need to start a nice page. Just use their domain search engine and one of their award-winning templates. It's all super easy to set up, very flexible and customizable. And if you ever need help, they offer 24-7 customer service. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter offer code MATTHIAS to get 10% off your first purchase.